Hello and welcome to Investigating Quadrilaterals. Let's first talk about what a quadrilateral is. A quadrilateral is any shape with straight edges and four sides that close together. That is a quadrilateral. There are many types of quadrilaterals and we're going to look at a few of them today. Um, first of all, we need to get some vocabulary out of the way. So as I said, what a quadrilateral is, it's any four-sided shape. Um, adjacent lines is something that we're going to need to talk about. And so adjacent lines are lines that are next to and attached to each other. So if I have this line right here, put these down, this line right here, and I have this line right here, they attach like this. These are now adjacent lines because they're touching. Okay? Opposite lines are lines that are across from each other and they are not joining lines. So if I have this line and I have this line and they are here and then I have a, a line here, imagine it, and a line connecting my elbows, imagine it. My arms are opposite lines. Okay, so opposite, adjacent. Opposite, adjacent. All right, so let's get to some of the names of shapes. We have got the common Square. Now what makes a square a square is that it needs to have one, two, three, four equal sides and it needs to have one, two, three, four right angles. If it does not have one of those, then it is not a square. Okay, so square. All sides are equal and all corners are right angles. They're all perpendicular. Next shape that we are also very familiar with is a rectangle. And a rectangle is similar to a square but um, it's different because it has two pairs of opposite equal sides. So that means that these sides are equal and these sides are equal, but they're not, oops, they're not necessarily all equal to each other. They could be, they could be. You could call the square a rectangle, but you'd be more accurate if you called the square a square. Um, a rectangle, however, could never just be called a square if it looks something like this. Okay, um, other features of a rectangle is that it has four right angles, always, and that there's two pairs of parallel sides. So these sides are always parallel, and these sides are always parallel. If you have those three features, then you definitely have a rectangle. Next up, we've got a rhombus. Now a rhombus is uh, very similar to the next one, parallelogram, in the way that a square is similar to a rectangle. Okay, so a rhombus is like a slanted, square. Rhombus, slant, slanted square. Parallelogram, slanted rectangle. Okay, so a, a rhombus has four equal sides and two pairs of parallel sides. So all of the sides have to be equal in a rhombus. Um, and the, the opposite sides of, of the rhombus have to be also parallel. So they're, they'll never touch if we extend those lines. Okay, so that's a rhombus. Now we've got a parallelogram. It's fun to say. Um, but a parallelogram also has two pairs of opposite equal sides. So just like the rectangle, how these are equal and these are equal length, that's how the parallelogram works. And it also has two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, so you'll notice that um, these, these could also be a square and these could also be a rectangle, but the difference is that these do not have um, right angles at all. There are no right angles in rhombuses, and there's no right angles in parallelograms. Okay, so that's how you tell the difference. Uh, next up, we're going to look at something quite different than, than those. I mean, as different as you can get with only four sides, but we've got a trapezoid. And a trapezoid, it has one pair of parallel sides. So it only, only uh, one pair. So, so uh, these ones are parallel, but these ones cannot be parallel. These are, gonna, these are going to meet. If we extend them, they're going to meet about right there. Okay, so this is a trapezoid. This is another type of a trapezoid because it, it only has the two sides that are parallel and the other ones are not. Okay, so there's another trapezoid example. There are many, but if it has one pair of par parallel sides and the rest are not, then it is a trapezoid. And the last one of the names of, of um, quadrilaterals is a kite. And you'll probably remember this one because it actually looks like the shape of a kite that we 
pulled in the, in the wind. Okay, so and what a kite has is it does not have any parallel sides. There are no sides that are parallel and it also has to have two pairs of equal adjacent sides. So that means that um, this one and this one that are touching, they have to be the same length and this one and this one that are touching have to be the same length. You'll notice that this one and this one are the same length and here and here they're the same length. So um, a kite has two sides that are touching that are the same length and another two sides that are touching that are the same length. Okay, so it could be this diamond sort of shape or it could be this, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, like a V kind of shape. Um, they're both a kite. Now, you might be thinking, what about those shapes that don't fit into any of those categories? Well, you turn the page because that we call those, uh, well, they're irregular quadrilaterals, but we'll just call them quadrilateral for now. Okay, so if it doesn't fit into any of the categories that I stated above, then we just call it a quadrilateral. Okay, um, and here's an example. It doesn't have any parallel sides. It doesn't have any sides that are, are equal lengths. There's no right angles in it. It's, it's, it's uh, almost nothing, but it has four sides. So it's called the quadrilateral. All right, one last thing that we need to look at is diagonals. So a diagonal is um, right here. This is an example of uh, this dotted line that connects the two corners. That's a diagonal. Okay, um, the mathematical term for it is a diagonal joins two opposite corners of a straight-sided shape. So we're connecting the two opposite corners. And so some things to notice in these types of shapes is the diagonals also have special characteristics. So in a square, the diagonals are equal. They're the same length in a square. And they are also perpendicular. So you can see the little square showing that those lines or those uh, uh, diagonals are perpendicular. Okay, in a rectangle, the diagonals of, of the rectangle are equal length, but they are not perpendicular. Okay, so that's, that's a special feature that's only in squares but not in rectangles. And then, and then a rhombus is opposite of a rectangle. The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular, so they make that little square, perfect right angle, but they are not the same length. They're actually different lengths. So if you notice, this one is actually uh, shorter than the other one. Okay, so um, you could look at the diagonals of, of some other ones, but these are some examples of uh, diagonals in these regular shapes. Now what we're going to do is you're going to get a lot of practice in your assignment, so we're just going to do name the shape. So please pause the video right now and see if you can name each one of these shapes up here. And you might want to use this if you're still watching. Um, anyways, so you should have this done by now. If not, then pause it again. But we are going to do this together. I just need a pen here. Uh, that one, I guess. Okay, so let's first name this one. This one, if you look on your paper here, is a trapezoid. So we will write trapezoid. How do we spell it here? There we go. Okay, the next one, let's see, what does it have here? It doesn't have equal sides, uh, it doesn't have any right angles, so we'll skip past square and rectangle. Uh, no, none of the sides are parallel, so we skip past rhombus and parallelogram and trapezoid. Um, and none of the sides are the same length, so it's not a kite either. That makes this a, and I'm just going to do an arrow because I don't have much space, quad. Uh, yeah, that's how you spell it. Quadrilaterals. I can type a lot better, or I can type spelling a lot better than I can do writing. Anyways, let's look at this one. So it has no right angles. It can't be a square or a rectangle. Let's see, it could be a rhombus or a par parallelogram. Now it looks like these are the same length and these are the same length. So that makes this a parallelogram because it has uh, two pairs of equal sides that are opposite each other, not adjacent to each other. All right, this one, I think everybody got this one. Uh, this one's a rectangle. This one here is a square. And over here, we have got, um, well, they look like all these sides are equal, so this makes this one a 
what I was saying before the camera so rudely cut me off was that this is a Rumbus. Okay, and you'll notice that one shape that we talked about um, today is not on here, and that is the kite. So let's practice drawing the two types of kites on our uh, papers here, just in the spot below. And I didn't do a very good job because I can't use a ruler on the smart board. So I'm gonna use hatch marks to show that these are supposed to be equal. Still trying my best though to make it look like a proper rhombus. Or not a rhombus, sorry, a kite. So here are my kites. All right, so your assignment is on page 232 to 233, and it's numbers three to seven, I mean three to five and seven. 